episode nine. This is the RJ and Dad Den podcast. This is Dad Den. RJ Machismo, what's good, y'all? Today we got episode nine today with Jeremy Canvas. He hey. is he is a uh, owner of Auntie Boba in Fort Washington, Maryland, and he's also a barber at the Friendly Barbershop. Uh, thank you for having us here tonight. Thank you all for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, I've I've listened to many or majority, I should majority say. of them. Yeah. Majority. Yeah, it's all good. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, bro. Thanks Definitely for, support bro. it. Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, yeah, we definitely appreciate you supporting us. That really means a lot to us. So, um, yeah, so but before we get started, uh, you know, you know the time. So um, you got a full segment called, what's our segment called, Rel? Uh, what, what, what was on your feet this week, bro? <laughs> so we, we what was the rotation? Jay. What was your rotation? With Jay. Yeah, so any, any shoe what you wore this week? Oh, man, the shoes that I wore. See, so I've been on, like, the same rotation for about, I say a good year and a half now, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I recently, this past week, surprisingly, I I put in a few different pairs. I wore my my usual uh, bread one lows. Hey, <laughs> those are like almost my dailies. Um, yeah. My I wore the Yeezy. What what's I, I don't even know the number. The Yeezy five hundred. I mean uh seven fifty. Seven fifties. Yeah. The wave, runner, wave runners. The wave runners. Yes, I wore those. Um, I wore some old school Nike SB Team Editions. Oh. I forgot the skater's name, um, but it has a tiger on the side. He he's he he's Taiwanese. Oh. Um, okay. And today I wore the uh, Kevin Garnett's. K, the KG uh, threes, your faves, right? The the, <laughs> the black and blue joints. The black and blue joints. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's joints rare now, bro. Yeah, the yeah. black and blue joints. I wore those. So yeah, that was my rotation for the week. For sure, for sure. Yes, sir. So, All right, for me, man. You know, I was just uh, being at work. You know, I'm I'm on that ultra boost. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm still in the ultra boost. I, I did buy those Zoom flies at the outlet, man. The Zoom fly uh, vapor threes, mm-hmm. uh, and those are good, bro. So I've been using that almost every day, going and running and stuff. So that's just been the the rotation for me. So it's cool. Just the running shoes, huh? Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, it gotta be comfy, man. All right, so for me, you know, I've, I've been working from home six days a week. So I'm in Benassi's. Nike Benassi joints. <laughs> Benassi slides. And then, you know, like after work, you know, I just go go for a little run. So I've been running like some some Hirachi joints, some, uh, uh, some beaters. So that's about it. Nothing. They can't really I mean, go yeah, out we, anywhere, we, man. <laughs> we don't go anywhere. So. Right. Uh, ain't ain't nowhere. no heat. Yeah. You can't even like unleash the heat right now. So Yeah, man. <sighs> it will, though. When, once once COVID is gone, man, we're going to bring some, some shoes out. Hell yeah. All right. So uh, you want to start a ball? Yeah, man. So Jay, man, you know, uh, tell mm-hmm. us, tell us more about yourself, man. Tell the the listeners. Uh, start off. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, my name is Jeremy Canlis from PG County, Prince George's County, Maryland. Born, born and raised here. Um, still reside in PG County till this day. Uh, family of the both of these guys, Guya Dundeen and Raleigh. Yes, sir. Um, I I am a restaurant owner and a barber as well. Uh, I am a regular guy, <laughs> <laughs> just like y'all, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, regular yeah. dudes, yeah, that's what living an everyday about. life, yeah, yeah. striving to be the best versions of ourselves, um, sure, aspiring yeah. to always reach new goals, always a student of the game, you know what I mean? So that's just me, uh, typical dude, <laughs> that's typical good guy just, 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 yeah. just hustling every day and, <laughs> you know, always working trying to, hard. yeah, working hard yeah. and always aspiring to be a better person we were yesterday. That's good, man. So, you know, you, you've been cutting here for a while now too. And, you know, like you had your nine to five and stuff like that, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so I don't know how long ago did you, you know, get into this restaurant business, you know what I'm saying? Like, how long ago was that? Well, the restaurant, I'm going to start off where it was always 
a thought in my head. Yeah. As I was working my nine to five, I always had a niche and an idea of um, venturing to the restaurant side. My parents, they've always been in the business, um, the restaurant business, ever since I was growing up. So I've always saw that part of it. Um, and it was always in the back of my mind to kind of take over. One day I would take over. I really didn't set a timeline. But when I was doing my everyday nine to five, Monday through Friday, six to 2.30, um, it, was always, it was always an idea. And then I was also cutting hair. I was also a barber. Working my nine to five, after my nine to five, well, actually six to two thirty. Yeah. yeah, after my six to two thirty, I would go to the barber shop and I would be at the barber shop from three to seven. Um, I was still trying to obtain my license at the time. I finally obtained that. And once I obtained my license, um, or I, I started going to school actually, to barber school. And then once I started going to barber school, I got into the barber shop. A uh, friendly barber shop, and I was still balancing the nine to five and still um, cutting hair, doing my appointments from three to seven. So after six to two thirty, I'd go straight to the barber shop, and from three p.m. to about seven p.m., I would be um, knocking out my heads and my clients yeah. straight. And right. then the idea of the restaurant was always in the back of my head. And then fast forward. The nine to five, I had to make a decision whether I was going to keep the nine to five or just go full fledged barbering. And I jumped over at full fledged barbering. And then I had more time to focus on the restaurant, my idea of, um, of kind of taking over the family restaurant. And when I had more time giving up the nine to five and I was just doing barbering, I got to, you know, put in my time there and actually do something with the restaurant versus just kind of dabbling in on my spare time. And I changed it to my mom's name, Gigi's Kitchen, um, previously known as Antonio's. Um, and I put in the work, um, rebranded, yeah. did some renovation. And we also were blessed um, with the opportunity to open a boba shop in the same location as um Gigi's kitchen so it was always it was always an idea of mine and it was honestly just it just it was just God's timing I mean right. it it just came into fruition over time it was it came organically it was always an idea I was pushing towards it and um when the time was right it just kind of snowballed from there so would you say your parents was the, you know, pretty much the inspiration for you to do all of that? My parents were definitely a, a, a big part of it. Right. Um, but as far as inspiration, I wouldn't necessarily say they inspired me to do it because I saw okay. what it took. You know right. what I mean? Like yeah. Yeah. I saw the hard work that it actually takes to run um, a food business. Right. Um, they definitely inspired me in many different ways, but to actually go for, um, go for that goal. Yeah. Um, they definitely influenced me and, um, it was just, they, um, inspired me in the sense of, it was more on the lines of me, I guess, like just continue trying to yeah trying to yeah. fulfill that yeah. that that yeah. side like you just want to take it off their shoulders yeah so, take yeah, it yeah. off their shoulders and yeah. kind of just continue on yeah. with the legacy that they have right. started yeah that's yeah. good yeah. so yeah that that's pretty much it when it comes when it comes to that and we were blessed to open up Auntie Boba which is doing well as yeah, and you guys are like one of the first boba shops in the uh, Washington. Yeah, Washington. <laughs> yeah, yeah we Washington, are, we're the yeah. only yeah. boba the shop. Only. It's the only, the only boba shop. And that's why I knew like the boba shop as well was always an idea of mine. Um, you could even ask some of my clients. I mean, I probably even told you once upon a time when I was chopping up Rael. Yeah. Um, 
that the a boba shop needs to be <laughs> in Fort Washington. Like yeah, there just yeah. needs to be a boba shop there. And we were blessed with the opportunity um, to open one in Fort Washington. And yeah, so far so good, thankfully. That's great. That's and then you also have a, a recent collaboration with a, a, like a, like a, a Mexican um, uh, restaurant, right? I just, you just oh yeah, 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 little minor taco. Yeah, yeah. that's a homie. Um, yeah, we they they collaborated with us. They were in the store. Um, we were doing pop ups. Yeah, we were doing pop ups for like about a month. Uh, we also had GFM come in. We all collaborated one weekend. Yeah, so it's been good. It's great, man. So um, you know, like with, with all of that being said, man, what were like the challenges that you faced, um, you know, from the beginning, like being, uh, you know, like a business owner now that you are? Um, there's a lot that comes with running a business. Um, thankfully, we have a great team. And thankfully, I have mentors to guide me through, you know, the whole business aspect. Uh, I have great support system. I have the family. But uh, the struggles come just like any business, bro. Yeah, right, you know right. what I mean? Like, there, there's so many things. Uh, and just the everyday grind, um, especially with COVID going on, there's a lot of adjustments that needed to be made. But just like anything else, you got to kind of just adapt. You have to adapt and go with the flow, go with how things are and Go with your gut. Go with your yeah. instinct. Try to make the best decision based on the moment that you, you you're in. Cool, man. So um, so not only that you're a business owner of uh, Auntie Boba, Gigi's Kitchen. Uh, you're as you told us, uh, you're also a barber at Friendly Barbershop, which is uh, yep. you know, it's one of those a staple in in uh, PG County for Washington area. Yes, sir. Um, how do you manage to balance uh, both both jobs? Um, managing barbering and managing the restaurant. It's honestly been, it, it, how, how can I put this? <laughs> is it difficult or is it like it's, I mean, manageable? It's, it's, it's all time management at yeah, the yeah. end of the day. It's all time management. Right, right. And like I said, uh, we have a great team at, at Gigi's Kitchen and Auntie Boba. We have a great team. So I could rely on those guys um, over there to kind of hold it down for right. the restaurant. So my time there is more on overseeing. Overseeing, yeah. Overseeing the function of the store versus being in a day-to-day. -day. Like a hands-on. Uh, yeah. Um, initially, it was more hands-on, of course, right. you know, right. just, just trying to go through the ropes, learning everything. Um, but having a great team is definitely a key, oh, definitely. Yeah. definitely a key to, to having and to kind of loosen the weight on your shoulders. Um, but without, without having a great team at the restaurant, honestly, I probably wouldn't even be able to do the barbershop thing. Right. Um, so all praise to the team at the restaurant and, and Auntie Boba, a shout out to them. <laughs> for allowing me to continue to fulfill my barbering career. Um, but that, that's really it. It, it. It's just time management, just like anything else. You know what I mean? Good. It's really just structuring uh, what I have to do and the, the responsibilities, uh, the obligations, what's, what's more priority than the other. Right. Um, but just like anything else, it's all the time management. Do you still cut here at home? Like those late night cuts? I do. I do occasionally. Yeah. Occasionally yeah. I do not. I have those clients that come, come by the house. Yeah. <laughs> um, because with COVID nowadays, I did like yeah. limit my hours at the barbershop. So I, I don't come in contact with as many people as I used to. Right. My day, my, so my days are obviously shorter. Um, but if those clients that aren't able to get a haircut within those times, then I will. Um, give you know I'll, I'll i'll offer um them to come after hours to the house and uh i'll chop them up then that's cool man so um not only that you were a business owner like i said you you were saying time management at um 
and Auntie Boba, Gigi's Kitchen. Uh, what's it like uh, working with those, um, you know, season, those experienced barbers, um, those barbers at Friendly Barbershop? Uh, can you tell us more about that? Uncles. Oh, it, it's all love. It's all love over there. Yeah, the, the barbershop. Karaoke. <laughs> the barbershop is great, man. You know, is it just like the movie, like barbershop, the movie. Everyone right? loves being at the barbershop. It like the barbershop is like a haven. It's like where you can kind of just let it out. You know what I mean? Just relax. It's, it's a place to just relax, kind of just let go of everything that you are dealing with in that day. And that's what a lot of people come there for. But like working with the older guys, it's kind of how I've lived. I've always been the kid that had older friends. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how it is at the barbershop. Every barber at the at friendly barbershop is no less than 70 years old. <laughs> no less than yeah. 70. For anyone listening, old school boy. friendly old barbershop boy. was established in 1989 by Lolo Ray. Yeah. That, was Everyone, that was you, you were born. Everyone knows who Lola Ray is. And yes, that is the year I was born. And that was where I got my first haircut. So Same with me. <laughs> it, it came full circle. It came full circle for me yeah. when I started cutting hair at Friendly Barbershop. Um, and probably a lot of the listeners that are going to tune in, y'all probably got y'all little fade from Friendly Barbershop, <laughs> from... Yeah. Whoever it was, Uncle P, Uncle Alex, Lola Ray, you got. I had a flat top for like yeah. the longest time. Um, even Kuya, Kuya got some fr yeah. uh, oh, friends. Uh, Uncle Alex, yeah, friends. Yeah, Uncle yeah, Alex, yeah, Uncle yeah, Alex, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's great being surrounded by those guys. I mean, you just see the passion in them. And just by a lot of knowledge that that you pick yeah. up. Oh, I pick up so much nuggets from them. They drop nuggets all day. Yeah. What's, that, what's like what's like the the, the one of the night the, the big like gems that they you know gave what advice that they gave you so you know, I, I i try to i try to talk to lolo ray right i try to talk to lolo ray as much as he is lolo ray is 92 years old turning 93 in october 93 years old I'm yeah. blessed bro lolo no. ray is the man that established friendly barbershop so my Next goal, I'm gonna tell y'all. Let me let me just break it down real quick. My next goal is to own Friendly Barbershop and to continue the legacy of Lola Ray. Like that's just for me. Like that's my personal goal. It don't matter if it's for a long period of time. That's just what I feel like needs to be done for the sake of this legendary man yeah, yeah. that is still breathing till this day. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. I, I talk to Lola Ray, you know, sometimes we get, we get deep in it, but, you know, sometimes we just scratch the surface. Hey, what's good? How are you doing today? But Lola Ray, the biggest gem that I picked up from him, he, he drops nuggets all the time. Um, but I always ask him how he, I think majority of the questions when I'll ask my clients, Hey, how old do you think this barber is? <laughs> the guy beside us. And I'm like, 75? I like, he'll go, he'll go higher, not higher. I'm like, they'll be like, 83? And he'll like, nah, nah, nah. And then he'll be like, 90? And like, he'll be like, close. And he goes to 93. And they always ask him, like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Um, but the thing that I remember the most is he always says just, live life you know you're right and you're wrong you know what's right and you know what's wrong just live that straight line always do what's good you know what i mean if you always choose what you think is good and you what you think is correct then you'll accept everything that comes at you because you made the decision that it was the right thing it was the correct thing to do Right. So I, I think that that's one of the biggest things that I picked up from him. So whenever I come to a point where I need to make a decision, I always base it, you know, that comes into my mind and I base it on like, okay, let me do what's right versus, you know, what you might think right. is the correct decision. So cool, man. shout out to Lolo Ray.
Shout out to Lola Ray, man. He's the man. He's, he's like the Calvin of uh, of barbershop. Man, well, man, that's a, that's a yeah, he, he's a full Washington legend for he's sure. Like a statue for real, for real. He's gonna have a statue, man. <laughs> that dude. With his yes. one leg up on the uh, on the yes, sir. On the leg yes, the sir. Headrest. Yep, that's that's his move. Go go ahead, Rel. Ask the next one. Yeah, man. So you know. You know, we've been we've been like chopping it up for a while, especially yeah. in the barbershop I and mean, going to your house playing basketball, man. Yeah, but you sure. know basketball is considered one of your first love, man. Like you won a lot of championships. I won championship with you. Um, like what was your like memorable moments, man? Because I know like for me there's a lot. Like you know, Oh, this is the good stuff. This <laughs> yeah, good. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like I know I, I played ball with you for so long and I can't basketball. Even, like, I'm gonna just yeah. lean back. I'm gonna lean back. Real quick. <laughs> nah. Yeah, tell tell us all about it, man. Tell, tell us the greatness, man. No, uh, bat. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I I picked up a basketball probably at the age of five, four or five years old. Um, but like I tell everybody, I didn't play organized basketball till I started playing in FABA. <laughs> with the Trojans. Yeah. Shout out to the homies. Shout out to the Trojans. Everybody that was on the squad. That was my first official, I can say, my first official, like, organized organized basketball team. And before that, it was just church ball, sports fest. Yeah. You know, folks in INC know what sports fest is, so. Yeah, it's like unity games now, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Before, 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 that's the only organized basketball I ever played. Before that, it was just at the park, at Tucker Road, you know what I mean? Um, or playing at church, <laughs> playing at church. That's the only basketball experience that I had. Um, but, hey, I was blessed with some type of talent. Um, and we... I was blessed with great teammates. I was good, blessed to be in good uh, positions to win championships. Uh, we used to hoop all the time in open gym at Whitman, and then I went from the Trojans, and then I started hooping with the Warriors and Faba. Shout out to the Warriors squad. Um, won multiple championships with them. I, I was just, I was still young, so I didn't get much PT, but I learned a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you got from, to, man. I learned a lot from the guys um, yeah. on my team. But my dad always told me, he always said, um, if you want to get better, then you got to surround yourself with better people, right? right? So it, the Warriors were was the championship team back then for for many long seasons. Time. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, many seasons. Time, yeah. It was always the Warriors in the Filipino League. So I was running with them, and – um yeah, I, I was I was running with the Warriors pretty much all my time in FABA and then we we hopped around, we created teams, Antonio's yeah. Bakery, yeah, yeah. and a few championships yeah. with them, um in FIBA and of course church, many championships with church <laughs> ball. Yeah. yeah. Um I had an opportunity to play in California, that was great. Philippines, Philippines. That was yeah. amazing. Like that's what I that's what I call my basketball career right there. Yeah, being able to play in the Philippines in front of like twenty thousand folks. Yeah. yeah, that right there was my big stage. Uh, we came up a little short, but it was all good. The experience yeah, yeah. was it was that's amazing. Right, it was amazing. Uh, I honestly felt like. Probably what NBA players feel like <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty on sure, a man. daily basis. You yeah, know like what 20, I mean? 20, like twenty thousand watching you. That's folks that's, coming up asking yeah. for your autograph to take yeah. a picture. You're like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, like, yeah. hey, come on, let's take yeah. a picture. You know I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. but that's why I say that experience alone. Uh, yeah, that right there. That was hands down probably one of the best experiences I ever had. Even playing basketball. Playing basketball in the gym where you have highlights, automatic uh, replays. Yeah. Like I got, I remember I got a block, and then I look up, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it's the replay of me getting the block. I'm like, damn, <laughs> this one right here is all right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, that right there, that's probably one of the uh, probably the top. Um, experience of it. Oh, and my game winning shot. I can't forget about that. Yeah, I was gonna.
Hey, I was going to leave I that. Can't, I, can't, that. I, I, can't. I, was, I was waiting. <laughs> Hold was, on. The I game was there, bro. I was there. Tell, tell, <laughs> us, tell us, man. Tell, tell, yeah, tell, right, right, tell right, us everything yeah. about so, it. I'll tell you my side of that. <laughs> the game went and shot. It was, I was, uh, I think, 18 years old, 18, maybe 19 years old. Run and at, shoot? At Run and Shoot in Forestville. It was, um, it was a church unity games. Uh, it was against Washington D.C. and it, I think it was a double overtime, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, double, overtime. double overtime. Yeah. The game's tied up. We got six seconds left. Mm-hmm. I get the ball. I ask for a pick from uh, Kuya Flo. Yeah. I ask for it on the left side. The man sets it on the right <laughs> side. So I go right, and then I go around the back, and then I'm coming up to the three-point line. And I'm about to get double team, and but I know the clock is going yeah, down. And yeah. I already know I'm shooting this joint. Yeah, even, I know. <laughs> even before the ball was inbound, like right, when right. we were huddled up. That's the goal, bro. That's the goal, bro. It it was, your head, right? To be honest, I'm gonna tell you right here. So I we actually get an offensive rebound, and I'm about to go. Like I'm already pushing the ball. Yeah. And I look over and they call a timeout. And I was low-key upset. Yeah. I was like, why? I was already about to go to the lane. And about the latest ball up because it was like it was a bad bounce and we got the it was we were already in transition off the offensive rebound but they call a timeout I said dang but when we were in the huddle I remember looking down at the ground I said like I was literally talking to myself where right? I was like Jay I'm gonna get this ball and I'm gonna make this run. like I literally you I literally had to talk confidence into myself like this is the time where I'm <laughs> this is the opportunity that I have and I'm gonna take this opportunity and I'm gonna make this bucket. And I got the ball, six seconds left. I asked for the pick, it's on the opposite side. I go around back, come up to the three, top of the arc, pull up, boom, I release it. I said, damn, that shit is good. That joint's good. <laughs> and I washed that joint. Yeah, I washed yeah. it going. And it wasn't a swoosh. It was like that a joint boom. rattles, blah, blah, yeah. boom, boom, <laughs> and then falls in. Bruh, what? <laughs> I was psyched. Like, yeah. I, and thankfully, JR was able to capture the whole joint. So, like, yeah. when I think about it, I think of honestly the video that JR edited, and you could just see the whole thing play out. I just go to the stands of the opposite side, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just started screaming, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, go home. Like, yeah. I felt like Dame Lillard. Like, how Dame be I? Yes, how Dame be I felt that. And yeah. that, uh, that right there was the best moment in my basketball career. That, yes. that has to be. And, and from that day, like, like I like I tell my younger cousins, Jaden, Kaylin, whoever you know is aspiring to be a better basketball player, whoever whoever it is, I always tell them that that confidence. Yeah. Once you overcome, like you, once you overcome that part where you don't think you could do it, and you actually do it, bruh, your confidence is through the roof. And that right there, that shot increased my confidence. I. The next Sunday at the Faba game, I was shooting all the shots, bro. All the shots. All the shots. Yeah. I, I came back that Sunday. I was like, give me the ball, bro. Give me the ball. Y'all need a sub. Put me in. Yeah, so. Yeah, that right there was probably, yeah, that was, yeah, that was the best, the best moment in my, in my basketball career. For sure. Yeah. That's crazy, for- man. Because, uh, like, when I, I remember when, you know, like, obviously I was in that game. But when the dude rolled out, I was yeah. wide open. I was like, this, this yeah. guy, you know, this guy shoot. <laughs> But I was ready though. I was wide yeah, open. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was no. open, but I was wide open. I was like, he's shooting it though. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, gonna, just, I'm gonna just go for a rebound just in case. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was tight though, man. We yeah, because I saw that Rael's man like left him. Yeah, yeah because they helped. You. Yeah, 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 they yeah. double seen to get you, bro. Trust, like I saw. It was like <laughs> bro, <laughs> it was like, you. Yeah. I saw. I forgot who it was, but somebody was on the block as well. Yeah. All I had to do was throw that joint right down. It would have been a layup. Yeah. But I, like I said before, like in the huddle, I already yeah. knew that I was, I was like super zoned out. Yeah. 
that when I when I had the ball, that's all it was. Like there was nothing else that was. If I got blocked, I got blocked. You know what I'm saying? I was going for that shot. Whatever the huddle was, I don't even know what we were talking about in the huddle. <laughs> I was just looking at the ground at my feet, and I was just telling myself, "I'm gonna make this damn shot." So, <laughs> damn. Yeah, the joint fell, and the crowd went wild, bro. It was wild. It was wild. You still play basketball, like you know, throughout all yeah. this stuff going on. You still have time to hoop. Uh, yeah, uh, thankfully, yeah, we, we, I've been working, working out with Caitlin sometimes, working out with Jaden, um, they're about to go to college, so, uh, thankfully, I've, I've had some time to, to spend on the court with them, uh, but, but I haven't ran, I haven't ran five, uh, fives in a minute, but, yeah, just, just, just getting shots up with them, that's about it. Yeah, cool, man. All right, so uh, thanks for for sharing that. Yeah, I mean basketball, like I said, it's a big um, that, that it's a big part of your life, right? That, yeah. That's, Hell that, yeah, that's, you that's already who know you are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, if if a hooper, you you know, a ho- a true hooper has basketball shorts like inside their jeans. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Is that facts? Yes, those, sir. Those big facts. We Fact. always ready. We always ready. Always. No matter if it's winter, summer. I can't even summer. imagine wearing that right now. That yeah, is so, <laughs> that that so like, uncomfortable, bro. Yeah, you imagine, like, but you, you know, care. like that's how. Yeah, that's how ready we were. <laughs> you didn't care, bro. Right. Yeah. Are you guys gonna? I don't know. Hold on. I don't know if I was ready to play basketball or if that was just the style. But no, I, I do was remember. ready. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready, bro. Any anywhere, bro. Damn! Yeah, I know. Anywhere, you man. just roll up. You just roll down your the pants, fucking, man. You sweat the, the, the shorts was coming off your yeah, jeans. Yeah, you thought the door yeah. spring dog. Like, oh yeah, we ready to we ready to hoop. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right. So thanks for sharing for um for basketball. So um, uh, back to your business. So uh, with I know you you want to aspire to aspire to own friendly barbershop, and also mm-hmm. you're doing well in uh, Auntie Boba slash DG Kitchen. Uh, where do you see where do you see your brands in the next three to five years? Um, as far as a barbershop, hopefully, um, hopefully, within the next three to five years, I'll be able to take over a friendly barbershop and continue, like I said, continue that legacy. Um, that that would be, really mean a lot to me. Uh, just growing up, just growing up in Fort Washington. You know what I mean? Just being a Fort Washington cat, like, just a PG head. You know what I mean? Just a PG Filipino kid. That would that would mean a lot because more than half the people that we know have gotten their hair cut from Friendly Barbershop. So that's where I, that's where I see uh, the barbering, my barbering career, I should say, in three to five years. And for Auntie Boba, Gigi's Kitchen, I just hope to have uh, multiple locations. Hopefully, open a, a location in DC. That would be great. Um, but yeah, just just to multiply, multiply the brand, multiply the establishment in different locations in the area, and who knows, maybe in different cities. Uh, so that's it. Always just striving to do that and, and building it oh, on a day to day. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Like, um, like I said, the, your your restaurant and the barbershop. Yeah. It's even it's like a two minute walk. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know. I see you scooter. Yes, from... sir. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that played a big part as well as like you know with my decision to quit the nine to five. Like I said, it was it was always an idea in my head on kind of what I was gonna do with my time when. I stopped working my nine to five. Um, luckily, I was able to build a clientele for barbering, and like the the restaurant is literally across the street, right. beside Harley Davidson. So that 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 played a big role in in the decision of me making the jump over. That's cool, man. Go ahead, uh, ask the next one. All right. So, you know, um, being a business owner, man, like you, you already told everybody what the challenges you face and stuff like that. Um, you know, mm-hmm. like what you got to go through, 
um, for anybody that wants to start a bi- a, you know, a business, any type of business, maybe, um, what, what like advice would you give them? Advice to give a, a new business owner. Yeah. Just to never, never fold. Don't fold. Um, especially in the beginning, of course, over time, it might be the most ideal thing to do, but in the beginning, man, just keep on striving. I I always give myself, I say at least four to five years, years. Um, Because that's what really, a year won't define your business. You know what I mean? Like they usually say a successful business is successful after five years. So that would be my advice for anybody trying to start a new business is push and keep on hustling until those five years are up, you know, Mm -hmm. set a deadline for yourself, set some goals and um, try to pursue those goals. And if the time comes where it's not where you want it to be, then okay, give it another thought. But before then, just keep on pushing and keep better. on hustling. You know what I right, mean? Just right, right. Every day, just try to be better. Just try to do more on a daily basis. And then after after time, you'll get a feel for what you actually want and what your actual goals and what your your reason for doing it. Yeah, so, so you just that, pretty much just like keep doing it, man. Just keep us on every day, right? Just keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. Is it like more of like taking a more of a risk or is it just like, you know, just do just it keep doing way. it until something happens? Yeah. yeah. Repeat that. What'd you say? Like, is it like, go ahead, go ahead, Ralph. Yeah. So it's like pretty much like uh, as far as like taking a risk, not, not in a risk, like not in a way like, all right, I'm going to do this and nothing comes out of it, but just like take a risk and just like, don't worry about what, what's going to happen. Right. You always right. have to just, take the risk, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but it's more about, staying optimistic during the times of the struggle because there's a short story um when i was opening up on tboba uh we had a soft opening and it was a soft opening for a reason soft opening is usually when you're trying to work the kinks out of the operations out of your the process of how you do everything so we opened I think it was March 16th, March 16th, 2018, is it 2018? No, 2019. Yeah, 2019. Yeah, 2019 years. Yeah, so yeah. we opened up that week, bro. And I lie to you now, that's probably the most stressed I've ever been in my <laughs> life. Yeah. And I honestly, I was questioning. I said, what the hell? Why did I leave this nine to five? <laughs> this yeah. chill ass nine to five. Yeah. I was just, two p.m. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like yeah, yeah, I got yeah. out at two. Yeah, yeah. The barber shop was my own. That like that I chose to do that, so I yeah. didn't have to do that. Yeah, right, right. I was living really comfortable with this nine to five. You know what I mean? So when when that when that struggle came, I was like. I question why I even <laughs> like, chose to do it. Like, yeah, yeah. why am I putting this burden on myself? Right. But it was a lot more after that week. So thankfully I had the support. I had the mentors, you know, I had the support system that I needed to get by that week alone. Right. Cause I honest, like the first day our brew machine stopped working. Yeah. Wow. We sold out of a lot of our inventory. So what you going to do the next day? You sold (laughs) out. What you going to sell? (laughs) So what happened though? What happened when you sold out? When we sold out, we were just selling whatever we had remaining. Yeah. So it was kind of like just figuring out on the go. You really had to problem solve. Like your problem solving skills just... It was more on survival yeah, skills, yeah. to be honest. You gotta do everything so, on the fly. He's so making, ta- making the most out of everything. Basically. So, like yeah. our Taro inventory, you know, Taro is like the number one thing in yeah. bubble tea, right? Especially in our community. 
So Taro was out the door. Avocado was out the door. This is the first day. We're like bumping so many orders, right? And there's a governor on the tea machine. It could only get up to this certain amount of temperature, right? It could only get so hot. And I didn't know that. So that was the struggle. Like, yeah. I was like, what the hell is up with this? I just bought this brewing <laughs> machine. So you're just learning on the fly and shit. Just learning <laughs> on the fly. And yeah. you learn as you go. Yeah. And, and that's just with anything, man. Like, that's with anything that you get into. You're always, it's just like getting a new job. You're not going to know how, this, how these people work at this job. Yeah. You know, it's new policies, it's new <clears throat> procedures. It's the same thing in the new business. You got to learn the new procedures and you got to figure it out. And I mean, that's the best advice I could give to a person trying to start a new venture is yeah. um, just keep on learning, man. Every day, you're always going to learn something new. Just try to grow as a person, as a brand, whatever you're going to do, just keep on growing and just try to always ask questions. Lolo always said questions are free. So if you don't know some, ask, ask the question, yeah, yeah. ask the question. Like don't, don't have too much pride to where you're afraid to ask or you want, you want, you're going to look dumb. <laughs> yeah. Like, nah, it's not about that. It's about trying to sustain your business so it could be successful. And if you right. don't know thing, if you don't know something, then you better ask because if you don't ask and you don't know, <laughs> then your shit is gonna go down the drain. Hell yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that that's the best advice I could give to somebody. That's great. That's and good. how long how long you been a business owner at um Auntie Boba uh, It's just just over a uh, over a year, a year and some change, man. Wow. I, I'm still I'm still new to the game. So like myself, I ask questions. I ask questions. If I don't know, I ask and I honestly try to get as much help as I can because you could only do so much. So much, yeah. You know, with yep. yourself and just balancing everything else with, you know, in life that you, you need the help. You need a team. You need a yeah. supporting cast. And just like basketball, you need a team to win championships. Oh, yeah. Just in business, yeah. you need a team to succeed, to be successful. So, I mean, just as, just as long as you could accept that, accept the fact that you need other people, accept the fact that you don't know everything, accept the fact that you need to ask and you need to learn for yourself, hey, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Just, as long, yeah, just as long as you could, you could accept that for yourself, then I feel like anybody could do it. Anybody could do it. It's just, are you willing to go through it? And are you willing to actually do it? I mean, that's like going back to what your dad was saying. Like you, you surround yourself with, you know, um, individuals that are, you know, that want to do what you want to do. Yes. Facts. I mean, that, that's like, yeah. that's, that's a big key right there. Right. Facts. So, facts, facts. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, for sure. so we, we moving on to the exciting part now. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> No you more know, work. No more yeah, work. Yeah, 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 no yeah. more all, business. All all of us have this in common, obviously. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, man. So tell it. Tell us. Tell tell the audience. Like, what got you into sneakers, man? Like, what was like? Tell us that story. Oh man, sneakers started at a young age. Yeah. <laughs> and this man right here, Cleveland Dean, plays a big role in the sneaker passion that I have. Um, it goes far beyond probably what a lot of people, Kuya probably even forgot where it began. Um, but it, it started back when I used to go to Lola's house as a kid. Kuya probably don't even know this story, to be honest. No, nah, that's what we're here um, for. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. But um, it started off at Lola's house. And I used to have these Segas, these Sega Genesis, Genesis. light up shoes from Payless. Oh, right? Damn. So Sega I had, <laughs> yeah, Sega Sport. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. So I had that pair and it used to light up. It wasn't LA gear. It was the Sega Junks, right? Yeah, yeah. So I had that. I was coming in on a daily with those. And then one day I come in and Kui was like, what? Where do you get these from? I was a like, pay less. <laughs> and it yeah. was the Dennis Rodman's. Worms. The worms, yeah. the worms with the zipper. And 
that right there kind of sparked the interest of sneakers, right? I wasn't full fledged. I was probably like eight years old at the time. I like I didn't even have money to afford. I don't even, you know, I don't even know where to go to buy shoes. <laughs> this is just what my parents bought me. But the fact that Kuya knew what the hell these Dennis Rodman worms were, I was like, all right, bet. And then years go by, years go by, and Kuya pulls up to our house in Bowie. And he's wearing these damn Jedi's. I'm like, what the freak are these <laughs> bright ass colored shoes, right? These are ugly. Like, why are you wearing these? I thought Jordan's wearing. But um, yeah, Kuya comes in and he puts me on game with Nike SB. But that day he was coming over the house, we were actually going to get some Jordans yeah. at PG Plaza. <laughs> PG Plaza. Uh, PG Plaza, we got the early release for the Jordan 19s. Yeah, the with your early, sister. Yeah, with my sister. I, yeah, I the think gray joints? Not the white nah, the black, nah, the black. Oh, black and red? The yeah, black the red. black and red joints. Okay. The cicadas. The cicadas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> so we, used to call them joints. <laughs> yeah. So we got those. Yeah. And it just so happened at the same time um, the Mellow 2s were coming out. So we yes. bought those. I didn't even have enough money. <laughs> so Kuya had to Kuya had to pay for them joints. And then my mom spotted me. She wrote <laughs> Kuya a check. I was like, here you go. Yeah. Thanks for buying Jeremy these shoes. Yeah, yeah. So Kuya definitely plays a big part. But even yeah. before that, like, it was the whole Jordan thing and then that whole SB game. And yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just growing up in PG County, it was just like a fashion show going to yeah. school every day. Um, I used to walk around Bowie High School. Shout out Bowie High School to all my folks at Bowie. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, that, that, that's all school was. It was to flaunt your shoes. And if you yeah. had shoes, then you were the man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, why we, that's why we did it. Yeah. So, you know, I was fortunate to see all your, your shoes in your room, man. Um, can you tell us, like, you know, your favorite pairs or, you know, there's no, like, top fives or anything. Just tell us, like, any favorite pairs that you have in mind. <sighs> oh, man. Uh, my favorite pairs off the top that comes to mind are, I don't know why, but I, it, it was always the Jordan 16s. Jordan 16s always had a sentimental – feeling for me i don't know why but i always even like back in the day i was like you know what when i get married i'm gonna wear the <laughs> i'm gonna wear the uh yeah. the uh cherry wood 16 cherry wood, yeah. but i think it comes from like sixth grade yeah they came out in sixth grade and this one girl had all of them joints. she had the randy monsters she had the 16 she had all of them um but yeah, the Jordan 16s are in my top in my top five for Jordans. Um, infrared sixes yeah. are one of my top Jordans. Obviously, the the Elevens. Which um, ones? Which ones? I'll say I'll say the Bread Elevens. Yeah. I'll say the Bread Elevens. <laughs> yeah. um, you know. I used to see I used to see like y'all yearbook with the slouch socks with folks wearing space jams. I was like, damn, that shit fire. Yeah. Remember um, the five pauses when you were when you wore rubber bands in, in, on your yeah. <laughs> No, rubber like band. man, and like for SBs, I'd say don't even get me started on the SBs because yeah, I still tell us. Like, tell us, man. This is the tell platform us, us. for you to, to yeah, say man, man. bro. No hold back. No hold back. I know I sold I sold majority of my collection less than a year ago. And the fact that they're at where they are right now right blows now. my <laughs> exactly. mind. Hell yeah. It like infuriates me because I sold it for so freaking cheap, bro. Like yeah. I got a fraction of what they go for nowadays, bro. Like yeah. I sold my uncles, I sold my Tiffany's, I sold my Ray Guns, I sold my your Hawaii's, three, my three honey, bears. my three bears. I sold all of them joints. All yeah. of them. Three bears. You can have a car already with those just Bro, I it. sold my three bear my three bears were DS. Um I sold my luckies. I sold 
my Stooshies. I sold my Sea Crystals. I sold, I sold all of them joints, bro. Wait, like, did, did, you even sold your dad's shoes at some SBs too, didn't and you? And I sold my dad. Yeah. So, <laughs> you like, better buy them back. Nah, I sold like my dad during that time. When I was selling my shoes, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just give this to my dad. So I gave my dad the sabotages. Yeah. I gave my dad these, like, the tweed lows. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to be like, hey, dad, I, I need these shoes, man. <laughs> yeah, dad, let, let, let me, me get them joints back, I'll give you 100 for these. No bull, yeah. So, you know, it's it's bittersweet. Like, I try to tell my soul, it is what it is. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but like, low-key, yeah, yeah, low-key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Low-key. Key. I know. We know how you feel. Yeah. Low-key, that, low shit kinda, that shit yeah. kind of hurt, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, but. let me ask you a question. At one point, um, what's the, how many shoes did you once own in one, in one sitting? Uh, not that much. I don't think it was that much. Like... I still have a few. I still have a good amount, but they're they're like the they're the bobo joints. The bobo yeah. joints. <laughs> I'm saying like when you had, when you were living, they're all the play of price joints. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But when uh, you were living at your parents' place, you know, when you had a, your dad built you a, a shoe, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I probably had. I probably said a good like two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred max. I I don't think it was more than that. Um. I think it was like about 200, man. Maybe 150 even. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks a lot more than what it actually is. But I, I'd say about like 150. Yeah, about 150. But it was a good half and half of Jordans, yeah. um, SBs, and then like you get your, you know, your old school Nikes and your Air Maxes thrown in there. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I mean, I remember seeing your closet, man. It was like nah, cool. dog. It, not right. like yours, dog. Like no, I mean, I'm your, just saying <laughs> your collection stomped my collection. Like Raleigh's collection of because you had uh your your wall was the damn covered. wall, man. He freaking yeah. covered the damn. Uh, I remember covered going one to, of these, the, the, bro. Lions, you I remember going to Eastover, bro, and we. I would skip school. I don't know who I would go with, but I would go to your yeah, crib. I, I remember that. Yeah. I went to your crib with who was it? Was it like oh, Matt? Matt or Lito? I remember, I remember Matt was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was probably yeah. Matt or Lito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um. We, I don't know why we just go to your crib. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, no, you'd yeah. probably be off school yeah, and yeah. we just pull up, play video games for like yeah. an hour and leave. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like, I remember seeing your collection, like, dog, this shit right here. <laughs> like, you're literally in a space of, it was, it had to be like, what, 10 by, yeah. 10 it by 15? It's a small ass room. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like, and we were literally surrounded by shoes. This shit was <laughs> like, bro, this shit yeah. was vicious. Like, we're playing video games yeah, and yeah, the, there's shoes, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, shoes, to, like, I'm literally like this. I'm touching the shoe right here. Yeah. And I'm touching the shoe right here. Yeah. But yeah, Rael's co- collection definitely surpasses mine. I, <laughs> like, even if I had more, like, your shit was just, you had, you had a good, you had a really, 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 really dope. <laughs> shoe collection yeah thanks sure. bro but i was just saying man and you know like seeing your stuff though man like it, it was a lot of quality stuff and you know i always saw you as like the sb guy because you had all the sbs so with like with all that stuff going on right now like you said it does hurt seeing it it hurts like, you know yeah yeah and then like you know it's coming back now bro it's like yeah. you know how you feel about that now i mean obviously it's obviously devastating but like okay. you know like how, what, what do you think like you know how the culture is now you know uh like, well, as far as the culture, to be honest, like, I really don't even keep up to date. Like, I don't know what yeah. the next SB release is going to be. Yeah. Um, but what I loved most about the SBs is that is the story that yeah. comes with the shoe. Every, every shoe, every design, it's a collaboration. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I loved about collecting SBs is that not only did you have a story to tell, when you're collecting it, when you camped out, but yeah, the yeah. but the shoe itself, you know what yeah. I mean. The shoe itself has a story. The different materials that were used, just like you know, the Tiffany is based off of the diamond and the crop skin and all of that. The Tiffany colors, yeah. um, 
and just you know that's that's what I loved about the SBs. But as far as the culture now, I have no idea what's gonna release right. in yeah. whenever. Right. Yeah, um, I don't keep up. I don't. Yeah, I don't. The shoe game in general, I'm not really into it. I'm more about the comfort, I guess yeah, you could yeah. say. And like, yeah, yeah. if I do like a shoe, then I'll try to obtain it. Yeah. But um, you won't. You won't go out of your way if you can. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm not gonna go out of my way. I'm gonna keep what I have. You're and, not gonna wait in line. I'm. Hey, I want. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm gonna try to holler at my friends that yeah. might have a plug or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. no, nah, I'm not really about like collecting the the most hype shoe nowadays you know but i it does hurt it yeah, does yeah, hurt yeah, yeah, yeah. and i do wish that i did have some of those sbs yeah. that i used to and majority of those that i sold to round two in virginia in richmond wow. and then look at them uh, now man right <laughs> unfortunately them shit's well, burned down exactly. man. So, all right yeah, r.i.p to to round two in virginia beach screw those guys that burn it down but my shoes were in there as well. Um, yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, like I said, it, it's a it, yeah. I get a little. I get a little hard. Do, do, do you feel? Yeah. There, there's a. There's a. I feel it. I feel it. Man. I feel it. Yeah. There is. Yeah. For every shoe you have, there's a story. You know what I mean? There's a story. There's a story. That's why, like, you know, um, you, you tell like your your wife, like, hey, you know, I used to own these and like. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Right, right. It's always gonna be. You just story. don't know what I went through with these shoes, you know. Yeah. Bruh, bruh. Yeah, you don't know nothing as far as trying to get these shoes. And since we're on the topic of, you don't know what I went through to get these shoes. <laughs> I got these right here. Oh, let's go. Let's this. go. And y'all don't know <laughs> what oh, I went man. through. <laughs> we, we, were there, we were all there, bro. We were all there. <laughs> hey, we got to tell them the story about yeah, these. Go ahead. Tell, 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 tell them the story, bro. Tell them the story, bro. The three of us were <laughs> present. Four of us with Nico, too. With Nico, Nico, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Nico shout was. Nico. Shout out to Nico. You, you were there when we were trying to get these <laughs> great fives. And these great fives still, they're, oh. they're still not fresh. I, I got the silica. <laughs> I still got the silica packs in here. Yeah, you, you know, still got the retro it. card? I got yeah. the card. Bruh, what? Look, I got, I, I don't even got, I barely got creases in these joints. Dang. But the story about these great five, I must say, we went to what? Three malls? We went to PG Plaza. I think we went to Arundel Mills. Yep. No, we went to four, bruh. We went to a Columbia, too. We went to, we went to Columbia, yeah. yes. So and we went to PG Plaza. Columbia, Arundel Mills, that all got shut down because yeah. either the line was too chaotic or they broke the glass. Yeah. <laughs> they broke Remember, the glass. they broke the glass. Yeah. They broke yeah, the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we went to Arundel Mills. We stayed at Arundel Mills for like a good 30 minutes yeah. because we weren't sure if they were yeah. going to open. Yeah, ain't nobody so was we're like, all right, so what are we going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we going to do? So we're like, all right, let's go to Security Boulevard <laughs> in the getaways place of baltimore, baltimore yeah. i asked so my wife is from baltimore and i asked her i was like hey, hey babe do you know where security uh security boulevard is and she's like oh yeah that's that's on the other side i'm like oh what's the <laughs> other side <laughs> what's the other side mean and she was like oh yeah that's on i think whatever east or west side of baltimore yeah yeah or it's just ghetto yeah <laughs> so that's like i guess the what what type? How would you put that into perspective as far as like in PG County? What mall is it? Probably like Iverson. Iverson. <laughs> yeah. Iverson it's like equivalent to an Iverson mall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's like the Iverson mall over in Baltimore, and we go over there and we line up. Nah, we don't. We line up outside. No. Line up outside. Yeah. 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 And then they open the doors and we jet. <laughs> Bro, I'm talking about this is the fastest I've ever ran in my life. Yeah. And people are pushing down chairs. Yeah. Like, they're pushing chairs. Oh, you can't get in front of me. We running through the food court, running, and we run into foot action. It was foot action, right? Yep, yeah, yep. first, yeah. Boom. We're, we're like, all right, bet. We're at foot action. <laughs> we're probably, like, the, the ninth or tenth yeah. person. So it was yeah. like, 
Yeah, I'm nine, yeah. you're 10, 11, yeah. and 12. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, bet. Nico go first. <laughs> Nico was like, all right, let me get the eight and a half, whatever yeah, size yeah, Nico yeah, wear. Yeah, yeah. Nico gets his, all right, bet. All right. <laughs> Nico gets his joint. I'm like, all right, Raelle, what size shoe? Me and Raelle were the same size. Raelle was like, next. Yeah. Raelle, what size you going to get, bro? Yeah, yeah. And then you got like a 10 and a half. 10, or 10 and a half, yeah. 10 you got a 10 and a half. I'm like, damn, I like, kind of wear a 10 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. And then I was like, let me get an 11. And then they're like, uh, we don't have an 11. I was like, what? They're like, <laughs> The guy before y'all just copped the last 11. I'm like, no, bro. <laughs> we were waiting here for an hour yeah. for y'all to open up. Yeah. And then Quill's like, man, all right, Jay, get out the way. They ain't got the 11. They're like, let me get a 12. He was like, we ain't got a 12. We're like, oh, I'm there. We're like, so me and Quill are short. We're like, what are we going to do? Right, right. Luckily, Shoe City, yeah. same mall, opens an hour later after yeah. foot action. So me and Kuya are standing at the gate, right? <laughs> I'm talking about, it's like, it's like, it's like 20 people yeah. in front of this gate. It wasn't even a line. It's not a line. <laughs> it's chaotic. It's, yeah. it's like a, a bunch of dogs trying to ram through a gate, bro. Yeah. right? And we're waiting. And I think the store opens at 11 or 10. I 10, think it opened yeah, at, 10. It was at 10. Yeah, so like yeah. it's 958. We over here like open up, open up. Literally, bro. I remember this. Like they cracked the gate up. Probably <laughs> like two feet. Bro, two feet high. We start crawling. We dive <laughs> under the damn gate. Yeah. And we're diving over the gate, right? And people are there, like. Everyone's getting through this gate. So we're trying to get there quick. And they have a high counter. Everybody's jumping on the counter, bro. Yeah, yeah. We're jumping on the counter like, I need a size 11. Yeah. I need a size this, size this, size this. There's only so many employees, right? So me and Quia over the counter like this. Let me get a <laughs> size 11. Oh, my man need a size 12. Yeah. Hey, thank goodness we got the attention of the employees. Right, yeah. we get they didn't know who to pick for real. They didn't, they know, didn't know. It's just a bunch of people hurtling all over the counter. This. All you saw was this. Yeah, all you saw is like everyone's heads jumping, everyone's stomach on the counter. <laughs> Literally, everyone's stomach on the counter. Ha like half of their body is over the counter, pointing at the suit shoe size they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I was like, I need a size eleven. Kuya needs a size twelve. And thank goodness the employees saw us and we got yeah. our size. And I was people sweating. People were heated, man. The people yeah. were like behind us. Dog. Bruh. What? We, we, so, just, we ran. We ran in Nico's car quick. Yeah. Quick. 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 They're like, <laughs> I bet we got. Yeah. They're like, how do these Asian boys get yeah. this? Dude? You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, all right. So yeah. we we got our shoes and we did. But we started that, we started that day probably what, like 10 11? p.m.? 10 p.m. 10, yeah, yeah, 10, yeah. 11 12 hours. 12 yeah. hours. That's the hunt, bro. That's and that's a drive back. Another hour to <laughs> drive back. Yeah. <laughs> to around the way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's about a 12, 13 hour shift of us trying to get these great 12s, great, right? Great, yeah, great, great fives. fives. <laughs> oh, great, great fives. My yeah. bad, my bad. Great fives. Yeah. Great I'm glad fives. you still have those, man. Bro. Yeah. Me I too. Don't tell them, man. I, Look, it's still got the Shoe City. Yeah. <laughs> it's still yeah. got the Shoe City sticker. Yep. Yeah, 149. Yeah. Yep, 149.99. Yeah, yeah. Bruh. Yeah, man. It's crazy, man. Like, you know, like, it's looking back at everything. Like, the way we get shoes back then, man. Like, people don't realize that it's no. like, so different, we went, bro. We went through you know, it was like a fucking hunt, bro. bro. I no got rifles. shoes. Yeah. It was a hunt. It was a hunt for some things. Yeah. Well, you know, we also got good deals on, yeah. on some shoes like models. Yeah, yeah models. Kids don't know what models is. Yeah. Hold on, let me, let me grab these pair of shoes. Oh, no, nah, nah. let's go. Let's go. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Hey, this is part of this part of the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, on the go, bro. Stories, man. <laughs> yeah, we, we all went through a lot. 
So yeah, it's way different, man. So. It's way different. You know, we got receipts, we got stories like you know, like Jeremy <laughs> right now. You can't. Um, he does. It's not. It's all factual. We, there's no. Yeah. Um, you know, I still remember. I'm it right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. Yeah. I'm back. I'm back. All right. All right. All right. Look at this. Look at this. Fifty percent off. Damn. Bro. Those. Oh, I know what those are. This is a player price right here. That is. Show them what it is. Show them what it is. Fifty percent off, bro. Models. I know that glossy box. Yeah. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Patent leather uh, one. You still got the. Nice. You still got the the tag. The um. The little chain. The jump man joint. I know you said hanging on your IS for uh. Your oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's in my car. That's in my car. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, the jump yeah. man joint. Yeah, it's still in my car. But yeah, like yeah. these joints right here, bro, fifty dollars. These joints going for like how much now? Yeah, yeah. A thousand. Yeah, see, I'm about to rock them tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you should. Yeah, you know, bend them up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 wear our, our, we wear our joints. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's always been a thing with me. I always wore my shoes. I was never the type to, to really try That's to keep good, it. That's good, you know. Yeah. Like a lot of people, they just they clean them up. You know, if you get if you scuff them, you scuff them. You hey, it is what it is. Yeah. You gotta wear your shoes, bro. They were meant yeah. to be worn. Meant to be worn. Meant to be balled in. Anything, you know, mm -hmm. do what you want to do with them. So, but yeah, man, with models though, like people don't know that. Like for me, it was the 18s. I got the 18s there for like under retail. Me too. It's crazy. 100 bucks. Yeah. 100 bucks. Yeah. 99. 100 bucks. Yeah. 99. Yeah. The yeah. black yeah. and blue Jones with yeah. a little. I was looking for the. I was yeah. looking for them right now. Yeah. I couldn't find I thought, them. Yeah. I thought you were going to bring those out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> with, the with the brush and the towel. Yeah. 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 So yes. Those is great, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, they had. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We Kids want to know about though. They did. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're actually about to close, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a lot of stores be like, yeah, you know, closing down, sales everywhere. But you go in there, ain't nothing. It's just a lot of bobo shoes, so it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Right, do, right. You, do, you, do you regret your selling your shoes, Jay? Like, like after looking uh, back? Not, not with monetary, but just looking back, like what you had memories with them. Do you regret selling them? Like, wish you had them? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. I, I mean, it's just like you kind of want what you can't have or yeah. what, what you don't have, I should say at this point, because I did have them once upon a time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do only, you know, because they're, they're nice to have. Like they, there was a yeah. sentimental, there was a sentimental, sentimental value yeah. Yeah, yeah. with, with some shoes, you know, not all shoes, but majority so, of them, you, yeah. you really know, like, the story behind obtaining them and the story behind just a shoe. And that that's just like what I was into. So it's just like losing a basketball game. You remember <laughs> some basketball games yeah, you lost yeah, yeah. and you remember some, some like some games you don't remember losing. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing as like when you, when you get rid of a shoe. Yeah. yeah, you, remember, yeah, yeah. you remember the ones you sell. And you're yeah, yeah, and you don't some so some shoes you sell you really don't care yeah. about but there, but yeah there are some pairs that I do remember that I do wish I still had. So like, what's the one shoe? I mean, I know you're you're just casually you know wear them. What's the one shoe that that will bring you back to like collecting again? If there's any <laughs> any, any shoe, yeah. The one like to make me collect again? Yeah. Well, or like or just buy, collect. just like buy. You know what? Like, like get cool. back into it, get like a little quick. It. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you're still gonna wear them, but you know, you, you're not as like super savvy like collecting. Like, what's that one shoe? Any shoe that you wish like you, you can have it retro, whether it's like the Air Worm. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, so like, what's the one shoe that I would want to re retro that I don't have? That too, is that, and like, what's the one shoe that you want to have, like, you know, to, for you? The to one get back shoe right now that I wish I had that I didn't sell. Okay, I'm I'm gonna rephrase it a little bit. All right, the one shoe that I wish that I still had was probably it would probably be my luckies. Oh no no no, my luckies, oh, my, yeah. my uncles, my uncles. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, yeah. my uncles, and I say that because. I mean, the uncles are just 
a great shoe in yeah. general, like the suede with the pink and then pink the blue, nice yeah. soft yeah. leather. Um, and then of course, Futura, Futura's design. Um, but they just fit really well on my foot. And it was one of the SBs that I wore a lot, even though yeah. they were such like a grail shoe. Yeah. Um, I wore them just because the comfort that I had with them. Like my luckies, they're they're a great shoe as well. But like even with a lot of the SBs that I did sell, they they weren't the most comfortable on foot. So I would say the um the uncles would probably be the shoe that I would want in my possession again. Yeah. Yeah, well maybe one day, man, someone might gift you a pair. And yeah. then that's or it might, or it might come out again. It might come out. It might, it might, but of course it's not gonna be the same though. Yeah, yeah. It's never you same. know what I'm it saying? It'll never be the same. Yeah. I gotta I gotta cut the same year, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you never know. You never but know. but but I mean, if it came down to like Jordans, though. Yeah, what's the Jordans? For Jordans, it would Laney Fives. Laney Fives. Mm, yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. Yeah, Laney Fives. Because I always had a pair of Laney Fives that were beat that I got from. Was it from Randy? Randy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hold on. Let me get these joints. Hold on. Hold on. Shout out Randy, bro. Shout, Shout out, out to Randy. Randy. We're going to bring them on later. Yeah. Right. That's crazy, man. I remember those Laney Fives, too, because I remember I was trying to get them from Randy, but I was like, ah, I, was not, I wasn't really a fan of the Fives that time, so. That's crazy, man. He still, he still I'm got back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm sorry, I'm like probably the worst. No, man. <laughs> I, be, I be going back and forth, but Dang this is it. This is it, the, the Laney Fives. That I that I got secondhand Damn. from from the Brody, Randy. So Randy actually comprised of half of my collection. Yeah, because Randy once upon a time wanted to become uh, like a Steve Urkel. You know what I'm saying? Like he wanted to, <laughs> my man wanted to be like a little preppy boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. my man wanted to wear polo, pink polos, and khakis all day. <laughs> With some boat shoes. I'm like, bro. Oh, man, we can bring them on right now. Yeah, I'm like, damn, Randy. All right, well, yeah. some of your shoes. So yeah. I was probably about like 17 years old or 16. And it just passed my birthday and I had all this birthday money. <laughs> you know, so I think I spent like $700 on like eight <laughs> pairs of shoes. <laughs> yeah, but those, those were gems though. But yeah. these are here or the Laney Fives. That um I got from Randy, but see, like I said, like these ones, yeah, that's yeah. You see the the, the cracks on these ones are (laughs) crucial. Yeah, yeah. So this also happened to my sixteens that I cop from Chris Glorioso. Yeah, I cop my sixteens from Chris Glorioso. Shout out Chris. Um, yeah, for a hundred, a hundred. $20, Twenty dollars, I believe. That's a steal, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, every shoe has a story, and this is the Laney Fives that I wish I could have in a fresher condition. Yeah. So. Yeah. Laney actually, Fives. they came out not too long ago. Uh, it was a they retro. did. Yeah. They right. Did, they did. Yeah. 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 I think like twenty twelve or something like right, that. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> A lot of great stories, man. Thanks yeah, for sharing. You know, so thanks, many. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, man, thanks so. for being a part of it too. It's yeah, a man. pleasure, man. Yeah, it, man. It's, a, it, it's hard to tell these type of stories to just you know to just anybody. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's hard to understand sometimes. Right. Like, exactly. You know, it's yeah. hard. It's like, they, it's they, hard they for. Know. Yeah. Right. 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 People just don't understand. Yeah. But when 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 you're in this type of community, then these yeah. type of stories yeah. are appreciated. So of course, you know, that's it's, what the it's point a, of the pod. It's a it's a pleasure to be on this podcast for sure. Yeah, man. So wrapping up everything, man, you know, we're gonna turn the tables. You know, you got any questions for us? Oh man. <laughs> yeah, what's your question? Question <laughs> is question. it individual or as a duo? Hey, no, don't a matter, duo. Don't matter. Yeah. Don't yeah. matter. Yeah, or whatever. All you right. I'm gonna I'm have two questions since it's two of y'all, but I want two two answers. Okay, is that is that fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. yeah, yeah. All right. Um, 
Any my questions? first question. My first question is for both of y'all. Um, if y'all can start your own business, you know, it, your wildest dreams, your wildest dreams, your most passionate um, dream that you can start a business with, what would it be? Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, you always from the other stuff. My man got to think a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. You know what? Any business, any business. Any, like, any business. Off, yeah. off the top, you know what I mean? Like, just straight out of love. Straight I, out of, like, I think, you know. uh, I think I'll probably dabble just like what Jay's doing, like, with the food business. There? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to do something with the, you know, the chicken t- wings. <laughs> Cluck you, you gotta buy Cluck you. I would love Cluck you is, is a, yeah. you know, um, it's a it's a DMV uh, classic. Well, primarily in like Maryland, yeah. New Jersey. See, um, a food I, joint. I would, I would literally, if I had like the money or you know the means, I definitely franchise them. You know, yeah. and expand it like everywhere. Let's do it in Cali, bro. Yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah, bring it, bring I, it I to know, Cali. Bro. Bring, bring it to Cali, Cali bro. Let's, speak, you, man. let's like, speak this into fruition right here, bro. We yeah, can start yeah. now. I'm yeah, telling yeah, you. Yeah, let's yeah, bring yeah. the cluckies out Cali. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you you yeah, get them from a little mumbo. You get them yeah, yeah, some yeah. mumbo. Oh, that bro. nuclear sauce. Yeah, with all due respect to Gigi's wings are good. Don't get hey, me wrong. Hey, bless, uh, bless, bless. Puck Hughes is on a, it's hey, a different Hey, we already topic. know. We already know. We already know. We already know. Yeah, if a, lot, a, lot of people, a lot of people don't know about this. When I, when I visit Maryland, every time, like, uh, I think last time I was there, yeah, I always make a trip to Cluck Hughes, man. <laughs> the, far, the closest one from Fort Washington is Bowie. Bowie. From where your old house is. The La- Lanham joints. Lanham. Yeah, the Lanham. Yeah, Seabrook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, I'd go there and I'd buy like a 10 piece and like <laughs> I get like the hottest, like the hottest flavor. Nah, like, like, my, man, my man be sweating, bro. I be sweating like shit. Like, the then, 911. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Get this man, I get yeah, this man, project. the last time he was here, this man was like, man, this shit is hotter than the last time. <laughs> and then the, fun, the uh, funny thing is like we brought, I brought my kid, like Mateo. Yeah. It was like Randy and then right? Yeah, Cam, Cam was there. Yeah, yeah and then Mateo yeah. was looking at me like, Papa, are you okay? Like, <laughs> why are you sweating, like, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like, you Papa, why are you so sweaty? Papa, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> right. Cam is looking like this. What's wrong with him? Yeah, you know, I definitely, yeah, definitely would want to bring like a, uh, like a wing place. I know, like you know, there's, you have your wing stop, your wing yes. street. Wing street. Mean. Bro, I'm telling you, Kuya, this has been a an, another crazy idea of mine. <laughs> but what if we brought chicken wings and mumbo sauce to California? That'd you should. Great. They should. They're they're already like um Capital City, Mumbo saw they're already like bringing That's out different, here. man. Yeah. I know, but yeah. we need to be an establishment yeah. that has yeah. chicken yeah. wings yeah, and mumbo saw. Like, like Chinese egg chicken wings, you know yeah, yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like cheese, egg roll. and Chinese chicken wings ain't the same from outside of DC and PG not, County. Yeah. That's like, people don't know it's not it's different, bro. When you go to Moco and when you go to Virginia, it's There's not the whole, same. It's not the yeah, same. Yeah, it's not the, the same. Fries is different. Gotta be that PG County. Gotta be that PG County It has, it has, to, be. Yeah, it has to be. Shout out to Danny. Shout out to Danny. Shout out to Danny's, Jerry. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, <laughs> yummy. That's my yum. shit right there. Yeah. Shout out to Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Hong Kong. All of them joints, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, telling you. Yeah, like, yeah, we definitely want to bring that too. We got to do that. We got to yeah, do that. Definitely, yeah. And yeah, that'll, that, that'll, 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 that'll happen one day. Yeah, yeah, maybe you should put that in your menu too. Yeah. See? Yeah, yeah. We could. It's, that, already, it's already. It's uh, already. There's too many of them around here. That's why I'm gonna bring it to Cali. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere they don't know. Yeah, yeah they ain't hip yeah. to. It. They ain't hip. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Ra? How about you, Ra? What, what's oh that? man, to be honest with you, I'm I'm. I always had this thing, like you know, being a boss of like, like being on top of like you know, like the office space. But I always wanted to be, you know, like in Randy's situation. Like I always wanted to own like my own brand, like with clothes and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I always wanted to do that, like if. You know, if I could open any business, it would be like either supplying the shirts or making my own brand with my own design and like supplying it to everybody. So, you know, like I said, it's similar to Randy's thing. So, but okay, you know, okay. right now it's like it's, it's a whole rag of that, you know what I'm saying? So, so brand like, like a, a apparel, yeah, 
any any shirt. It could right. just it could be printed, or it could be like a style of shirt, style of sweater. You gotcha. Know, that, yeah, anything with like some fashion stuff. So. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's that. That's very interesting. Like we got, we got, we got the food, and then we yeah. got the, you we got the, the clothes, appear. Right? Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. the. Your business minded already, man. Yeah, I like it. Trying, I like man. it. I like yeah. it. I like it. This is like yeah. Shark Tank, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make me like promote an idea for you. Fund yes, it. Like, yeah. you like, that's food. great. That's great. I mean, that's why I asked the question because I just, you know, I, I never saw that side of of y'all minds you know yeah, what i mean yeah so it, it, that that's the reason why i asked the question but for my second question y'all are both great parents and great <laughs> fathers yeah um new you know and not as new <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um both people that i look up to um great great providers for their family tell the people and tell me why or what is your why what is your your meaning your why and your purpose just on a day to day oh for me man um i'll answer this one since you go first yeah yeah for me is is my daughter now um i think before it was before my daughter, it was, you know, being with Joanna, um, you know, obviously just being a family guy. I always wanted to be a family guy since like the beginning. Cause like looking up to my dad, man, you know, he's a hard working dude. So yeah. it's like, you know, for me, I wanted to be like that, you know what I'm saying? I always want to be provide. Respect. But, yeah. Respect. respect. I'm always been a family guy, man. So like, you know, being with my daughter now, it's like, it's a whole different story. You know, it's just, it's a whole new dynamic to it. It's just okay. not being a family guy no more. Like I always got to watch out for her too. And make gotcha. sure that you know, you know, make sure everything is great. Obviously, you know, that's like you know, every day I get up, I just I always think about her. You know, what I'm saying like, especially with all the stuff going on right now with the health crisis and stuff. You know, you always want to like stay away from it. You know, what I'm saying you got right, right, right. you got to do everything to not get yourself like sick, pretty much, right? And so, mm-hmm. you know, obviously now, you know, we're all working out. You know, we're just staying healthy. So, you know, every day I just you know I I, I want to be there in the long run for my daughter. So that's gotcha. what I'm doing now too. So, I mean, I think that's, uh, that's the main part of my why for this life. Right, yeah, right. Just like in basketball, man, you know, you know how I am in basketball. Anytime we got yeah. an upcoming tournament, you know, I'm always at the gym, you know, it's like, right, right, right. I got that mama mentality, man, you know, so you got to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to just, you know, be there. So I think for me, that's like, that's my why, man. So, man. Yeah. Right. Man, that's, man, that's, yeah. that's, man, that's deep. Yeah. I like it. I, I, I never like heard it. that. I, I ain't heard yeah. that, man. Yeah, man. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's, that's, honest, that's, it's, it's, a, it's a new life, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I said, you know, having a kid, I mean, I know Danny knows this, you know, having a, your first kid, you know, it changes everything. It changes you. It changes how, you know, like your, your timing and everything. Right. Yeah, that's that's crazy, man. So. Right. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So for me, yeah, same with Rel too. You know, it's a um, family, you know, like I live for family. Um, for me also too, uh, I also want to stick around like as long as, you know, God willing, as long as I can, you know, see my kid grow up, graduate, have, have his family, bec- me become grandparents and then, you know, setting a, a good legacy for him, good, you know, founding foundation. Um, you know, those are the things like, especially like for me trying to, you know, trying to be healthy too, you know, um, our family is not as, uh, you know, <laughs> we have a, a history of like health, right, right. health things. So what I mean, we try to, we try to um, overcome that, you know, I'll, I'll right, right. overcome it. And, you know, Jay is a, you're in the, you're a living testament of like what it is, you know, what it is to, it takes to, to get where you want to be. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, appreciate that. yeah. So we want, like, for me, like, I want you to, Continue to have success on what you're doing. Keep your best foot forward. Continue to love what you do. You know, of course, obviously, you have a wonderful wife. You have a beautiful, you know, God willing, you will have a beautiful family. You'll have kids. Yeah. Uh, I think, see, yeah, bro. just, uh, yeah, don't, I mean, don't wait, man. That's, that's, that's re- wait, honestly wait. the reason why I asked that question. Yeah. Um, because I know, you know, just, 
asking people or people telling me and having all these different people surrounding me in my circle, um, they always say that their why and their drive and what they do today is for their their kids and their family and obviously their future um because you know that like i said that that that's why i look up to y'all y'all over here providing for y'all families and i hope to aspire to be that uh, that type of guy one day as well you will you will Okay. Don't wait. Yes, my my advice. Is don't wait. Yes, sir. Don't care, just hey, like man. my dad say. Just like my dad say. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> like my dad like, say the same damn thing, bro. It's like a, it's like a camera's like guy thing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said that I mean, thing on my wedding. You have yeah, a lot of shoes. Just do it. Right, right. right, right. I remember right. your dad said that to me after we got married. So when when we're gonna have uh you know your first kid? Right, right. Just right. got married, uncle. Just got married, man. <laughs> Yeah, I know, so, I know. Yeah, I hear, I hear it on a daily basis. Yeah, but um, pretty sure you're hearing all that. Too. Yeah, it, it is, yeah. it's yeah. really good to hear hear it coming from y'all. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and yeah, and, and I, I really good. appreciate that that side of y'all. And yeah, uh, yeah it, it's really it's inspiring and motivating yeah. to to try to grow. As, yeah. as an yeah, individual, I mean, every day is, yeah, you every know day is, I mean? it's a growth, man. You know, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I feel yeah. like once that time comes for me, then yeah. it'll yeah. definitely. I, I'm pretty sure you know you, you'll be good, bro. You, you're, yeah. you're, you will. You are. Yeah. You're in a good spot right now. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing everything you we need to do. We, yeah. We'll be all right. We'll be good out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We blessed out we here. Blessed we out blessed out here. There you go. I've been waiting for you to say that. With the blessings, yeah. We blessed out here, man. Yes, that, that's all it is. Yeah. Always. Yeah. yeah. All rise, baby. We blessed yes, out sir. here. Coming soon. Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Well, so I uh, just want to say thank you, Jay, for um for having us the opportunity to interview you. Uh we definitely want to want to bring you back in. You know, hopefully yeah. they'll be better, you know, they'll be more yeah. more successful yeah. going in the on future. after in this. The future. Yes, sir. You know, so um, yeah, so uh, you know, thank you again. And we hope to, yeah, we're definitely going to talk to you again soon. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Love y'all. Love y'all. All right, man. All right, everybody there. listening, tune in to the podcast. Love you guys. Yes, sir. All right. And what's your, um, what's your, uh, what's your social media handles? Yeah. Jay Can't Cuts. We got Gigi's Kitchen. And we also got Auntie Boba. Yeah, uh, follow us on Instagram and... Yeah, yeah, we'll put the link down yeah, below. We'll put the link. Yeah, yeah. on the YouTube page. So just appreciate gonna, you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Really love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Take care. All right, bro.